Hello, I'm Richard Ridge for Broadway World. The new documentary, Siempre Luis, tells the story of Luis Miranda, who left Puerto Rico for New York in the 1970s. He had big dreams, but little did he know how far he would go. Of course, he is the father of Hamilton creator Lin-Manuel Miranda. The documentary is directed by John James and will kick off on HBO on October 6th. I caught up with Luis to chat about his journey and his love for Debbie Reynolds and the unsinkable Molly Brown. Hi, Luis. How are you? I am doing well. Nice to be with you. Well, first off, I loved the documentary. I told Charlie already and Alex, I've watched it three times already, just so you know. And it's absolutely Thank you. sensational. I'm, I'm, I'm glad you liked it. Well, before we start talking about the documentary, I want to ask you, how are you and where are you right now? I am doing great. I am uh, very healthy. I just had a bowl of spinach for lunch. I got up this morning and did exercise and took my pills. Uh, and I am the healthiest member of my family. <laughs> I love that. I was going to ask you, what has frustrated you and what has amazed you the most with this ongoing pandemic? Uh, I, 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 I try very, very hard uh, to shift uh, and do the best I can giving the hand I'm being given and given the circumstances in which I'm in. So I find uh, that I have much more time to do things. Uh, things like, you know, I, I, I went to LA or to California at least every six weeks and I spent 10 hours in a plane, and even though I worked a lot of the time, I always sneaked in uh, seeing The Greatest Showman, and there two hours went away uh, watching a movie. Now that doesn't exist. I get on my computer in the morning, I go from digital platform to digital platform, and I work all the time. So I am much more efficient uh, than ever uh, in, in doing work. Yeah. And I guess I'm sure you get to answer your emails finally now, those thousands and thousands of emails that pile up for you. There is. <laughs> and, and my team has learned that all emails are not work. I have great satisfaction in getting promotional emails from companies and seeing what are the latest shoes that I ought to be wearing, uh, even if I go nowhere, uh, or what's the new shirt style that it's being worn, even though I don't need it. Uh, so so I, I, I go email by email and, and, and my team knows, don't delete anything because he may want to look at that promotion. <laughs> I love it. Well, like I told you, I love the documentary. What's been amazing for me as an audience member is getting to know you, your family, and your passions. I have known Lynn since very early on in In the Heights. And now I know where he's gotten his drive and his passion from. He's gotten it from you. Uh, yes, uh, Lin Manuel have said many, many times uh, that even though I wanted him initially to be a lawyer, by setting the example of musicals as the highest achievement on earth it was impossible for him to do anything else but be in this particular lane you know when i was in puerto rico and uh, i was a, a kid i did not understand a lot of english but there was something special about musicals uh, where i used to buy every lp 
and listen to it. I didn't know what they were saying, but there was something magical uh, that captured my heart in whatever they were singing. Yeah, well, over my shoulder right here is Debbie Reynolds in The Unsinkable Molly Brown. Debbie was a dear friend of mine. It is also one of my favorite films. And I learned from your documentary that The Unsinkable Molly Brown is your favorite film. What is the connection to you, Luis, and that movie? It, it, it's, yeah. it's, it's a little insane. I saw The Unsinkable Molly Brown. I must have been nine. 10 years old, it was in the early 60s. I was born in 54. And then I never saw the unsinkable Molly Brown ever again, until the day I arrived in New York. Those were the days where you actually had to look at a TV guide to figure out what they were showing. I remember getting to my aunt's house, looking at the TV guide, and they were showing two movies that I liked. One was Lana Turner in Madame X. Yeah. And the other one was the unsinkable Marla Brown that is, was being shown at two o'clock in the morning. And I remember thinking how disrespectful the best movie on earth they're showing in New York at two o'clock in the morning. So I watched it after an entire decade uh, of not knowing about the movie, but always being in my head as this remarkable woman uh, who in real life uh, fought so hard uh, and by this remarkable actor, Debbie Reynolds, who portrayed her uh, on the movie screen uh, so much. I have, <laughs> I could go on and on and talk yeah. about Molly Brown forever. <laughs> I have been at the site where the real Molly Brown is buried. I flew and went to the museum to see the real house where Mala Brown uh, uh, sort of entertained and sort of lived. And one of the most magical uh, moments in my life was when Lee Manuel was playing uh, in the Heights, he was playing Usnavia, the Pantages in LA. Uh, the head of the Pantages uh, said, I, I have a surprise for you. And the show was over and we got in the car and we drove and we were to spend the night with Debbie Reynolds. Wow. It was, <laughs> it was remarkable. It was like, I, 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 I don't get Goo Goo Gaga uh, often, uh, but that night, I was Goo Goo Gaga the entire night, just amazed by the woman's energy and talent and fantastic storytelling. It was a magical night. Yeah. Well, you have the same energy and the drive that Debbie did, because Debbie always told me, I'm the closest to Molly Brown as anyone. And when you look at your political career and everything you've done, you have helped so many people throughout the years. You have that same drive, passion, tenacity to help and move forward. You know, the other thing is, you know, I'm sure when this documentary first came together, you had no idea where it was going to go. And then things like Hurricane Maria hit your beautiful Puerto Rico. Just talk about how you saved or helped to save Puerto Rico through what you did and then bringing Hamilton there, too. I, uh, when, 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 when I, I, I watched the documentary, uh, the incomplete part of the documentary, it's that there's never uh, captions of all the people who were actually responsible for that in addition to me. And that you never have time to thank uh, everyone who played a pivotal role. Uh, 
Hurricane Maria hit and immediately, uh, because this country is a good country and it has good people, uh, immediately millions of Puerto Ricans in the diaspora, our larger Latino family, millions of good people throughout the country came to the rescue. What the federal government didn't do, the people of this country did. Uh, and, you know, I, I, I was able and I was for always thankful to the many who propelled themselves into action and started working right away to help Puerto Rico in that terrible moment uh, where the country had been flattened. And bringing Hamilton there, it raised so much money for the people of Puerto Rico. Would you just, you obviously have the numbers in your head, $15 million, right? And then another $45 million or something. And then, you know, 40,000 people got to see. Yeah, it's, you know, but, but re re remember, uh, the federal government, the need uh, of Puerto Rico after the hurricane to rebuild it to where it was, was $90 billion. Uh, the federal government, thanks to our congressional delegation and Senator Schumer and Speaker Nancy Pelosi and Congresswoman Nidia Velasquez, who sort of led the fight to approve $40 billion for Puerto Rico. Not everything that was needed, but enough to get it going. Yeah. And the Trump administration stopped the aid, slowed every penny that went uh, through agencies at the federal level. So our little aid, the $45 million and the other tens of millions of dollars that Ricky Martin and Jennifer Lopez and so many other uh, artists helped raise was immediate to the people of Puerto Rico. And taking Hamilton uh, for Lee Manuel, you, you have to understand, I will do anything and everything to make my kids' wishes a reality. I will go through hoops to the end of the world uh, to make that happen. That's why even though it was laborious to finally open Hamilton in Puerto Rico, we all worked to do it because it was money for a sector of society that always get forgotten. That it's never on top of the list to help. And those are the artists. So we knew that every penny that we raised with Hamilton will go to artists and arts organizations in the island. That's beautiful. One of my final questions for you is, November, it's a big election. Would you just tell our audience watching, who are watching all around the world, how important it is to register and vote? Uh, this election, it's, it's consequential. I, you know, I, I, I don't want to be dramatic, though it's impossible to like musicals and not be dramatic. Yeah. Uh, but we're selecting between evil and good. It's just as simple as that. When you have a president uh, that I hope uh, he will recoup quickly uh, and get in the campaign trail uh, so that we can defeat him in the campaign trail, uh, that cannot even condemn white supremacists. You know you're dealing with, ev that with evil. So we need to win this very consequential election, the most important in my lifetime. 
But politics, it's not only about voting every year in whatever election your city or your state or your country has. It's about trying to make change using all of the institutions we have. So when Biden wins immediately after, we're going to continue to work with him through every single institution to make sure that real change happen for the people in this country that always get forgotten. So that has been my commitment in life and that will be my commitment until that eternity moment. Beautiful. My final question is, what do you hope people leave with after seeing this documentary? I hope, I, I, I have lived my life with a motto. I have it in my head in Spanish. Eh, no dejes para mañana lo que pueda hacer hoy. Don't do tomorrow what you can do today. That they go back and see, did I do the 10 things that were feasible for me to do to make my family better, to make my community better, to make my country better, and that they will go and do them. No one is going to do it for us. We have to do it. And if we do it individually and collectively, we will be able to write wrongs. Like I said, I thank you so much for sitting with me. For our audience watching, Siempre Luis kicks off on HBO on October 6th. Luis Miranda, thank you so much for visiting with me today at Broadway World. Thank you, and thank you for being a great fan of the unsinkable Molly Brown. It's Debbie Reynolds all the way. <laughs> so you had a heart attack, and that was a year ago. Right. How are you, Dad? How's your health? Uh, probably busier than I was before the heart attack. You have been going nonstop for non -stop. so long, Luis. Really. That's pretty Luis Miranda. His relentlessness to keep going. And that's what I keyed in on when I was playing Hamilton. I was just playing my father. He's just a relentless motherfucker. I am from Puerto Rico, a little town called Vega Alta. All of us who come from Puerto Rico share an experience trying to do better in this other place. Not everyone wanted us here. I saw that as an opportunity to reach out to other Latinos to open government to them. Vote well, Letitia James for Attorney General. No kisses. Hurricane Maria, the strongest hurricane in history to make landfall. For me, Puerto Rico is this perfect place that all of a sudden doesn't exist anymore. I immediately saw it as a responsibility to rebuild the island. I tell him, I don't want to be a widow. There isn't another you to replace you. Doing everything we can becomes the job. Together, we cannot be stopped.